VS Sundara Raman, VP Road, Develop, Road Product Development, Ramco Systems. Mr. Raman, a researcher from IIT Chennai, is currently VP Road, Product Development and Ramco Systems. With over 18 years of experience in IT industry, Mr. Raman has helped large, small and medium-sized organizations adopt cloud computing. He is Chief Architect of India's first cloud-based enterprise class ERP and an evangelist of software as a service model for business computing needs of organizations. Today he is going to talk on why SaaS is perfect for growing business. Please come in, sir. I think Friday evening, after a heavy lunch, it's a difficult session for any of the presenters, but uh, I think uh, the presenter before me as well as myself, we are going to talk more or less on the same subject, but uh, uh, the context could be a little bit different. Um, uh, I do hope that I will keep all of you awake for the next half an hour. Uh, if not, then I am not doing justice to what, what I have done, what we have come for. So this is a house, you see 1960s, this is how uh, my grandfather or our grandfathers used to live, uh, individual houses. Uh, possibly a servant quarter somewhere and uh, uh, a cow shed. Uh, possibly rich people could have offered a small generator out their house. Everything you could own, you could pay for it. And uh, this is how we used to live. A um, little bit later what happened is like um, with the evolution and also things becoming a little bit scarce. People started coming together, but still trying to own their own uh, house, try to have as many um, individual facilities, but little bit of shared facilities that, that comes with the colony. Now this is the 90s, where possibly the individual house concept has left. We shared the same wall with our neighbor, and uh, we shared the same water tank, we shared the same uh, common facilities. And possibly in my daughter's time, we don't own anything. I think if you look at it, uh, whatever we are talking about cloud, is nothing great. It's just the way we have started living. It's just coming into the computer field or the uh, uh, software field. It's just that it's a it's an exact mirror replication of how we have started living, how we have started adjusting to the changes that's happening around us. Everything is scarce. You need to optimize on everything. And uh, um, I, I, when, when I started my career, I never thought that I will go for a bank and take a loan. Everything we used to own first, b give the payment upfront and take it. Today what happens is like everything is EMI based. We don't care about whether the value, whether I can really pay for it over the long term, but we still want to own it. As long as we can pay for it, it's fine. Otherwise, you just throw away what you want, what you have. So things, if you look at it, cloud computing is... Nothing great, it's a natural evolution which actually follows our life pattern. What has changed over the last 40, 50 years. But it has got a very, very serious implication on the business. Why is it? It's because if you take Indian economy, close to 70% of the value of GDP is coming from medium and small enterprises. Uh, it could be, if you look at it, a typical car which rolls out of a Maruti factory, close to 70, to even for that matter, I think these days it should be more than 85%, the value addition happens outside the Maruti's factory. And even the tire two suppliers are actually outsourcing it to the smaller guys in Tumkur industrial estate or in Ambatur industrial estate in Chennai. Ultimately, value addition happens in the smaller companies the bigger companies do primarily the sophisticated operations or the assembly. But if you look at it, till 90s, we didn't have this problem that the efficiency of our small and medium businesses were not really measured because we were in a closed economy. We can produce what we have sold and uh, people were accepting waiting for a Bajaj scooter for five years or six years. Things changed in the last two decades wherein you have to compete with the best in the world, but you cannot afford to get the best of the systems. I come from an ERP company, so I can't talk about the ERP context of this because ERP actually is the one which is running the whole organization. 
And if you see in India, the small and medium businesses have been traditionally looking at ERP as an accounting package. They have never looked at from a productivity, from an organizational perspective. We have been looking at this as more an accounting thing which automates your accounting. And because of this, what has happened is like many of the crucial uh, value additions have been going to countries like China or for that matter to the Far East. The reason is like these were able to adopt late technologies and possibly they are part of larger conglomerates which could adopt these technologies. So I will just sift through the same thing, the same uh, correlation that we had between the living style and the, how the software business went. In 2000, in the early 2000, we had this big BPO boom coming in. But the problem is like, I haven't heard a small organization which was able to use the BPO services effectively. Primarily because BPO was meant to be served to the clients in US and UK and uh, possibly the western countries where you get paid in dollars uh, and pounds. And we never looked at taking the same scale of operations to help the Indian businesses. Indian businesses are traditionally living with the tallies and the focuses of the world which were primarily meant for help uh, ma managing the accountants and managing the uh, IT department. They were never being used for managing the business. So what was ASP model or BPO model that happened were primarily meant for the larger organizations and India was also driving towards looking at larger customers who could benefit out of this. We haven't seen many players who went to the extent of supporting these large BPO infrastructure that we have created and extending it to SMEs. So these were the challenges that are faced by SMEs. One is like you pretty much have the same business challenges as a large corporation like Tata Motors have, except that for them it's in thousands of crores, for, for a small business it's in tens of lakhs or tens of thousands. You have the same problem, you have the same operational problems, material problem, work in progress, cash flow. But at the end of the day, what happens like the, the problem with the smaller companies is like you cannot go to bank and demand an OD at a rate of say 5 or 6 percent interest, which a large company can get because of the sheer money power they have. So these organizations, if you look at it, they were not having the advantage, they were, they were having the disadvantage of having to work with the low end uh, enterprise applications or IT solutions and trying to compete with the global uh, competitors and, and in a larger way they were being sandwiched because of globalization as well as not non-availability of the best technology. So when we started the whole thing, that's I think as a company we started pretty early, we started in 2004-2005, uh, we looked at why can't we provide the same world class ERP which organizations buy for few million dollars, spend few million dollars in implementing it, providing it as a platform for companies to subscribe and use. This brings in a large scale democratization of the technology across organizations because at the end of the day, whether you are small or big, you have the same complexity of running the businesses. So the traditional model that even we were professing at that point of time is buy a large ERP, have a large team, have an IT team which will manage your entire uh, application and at some point of time what was happening is like the companies were becoming slaves to their IT departments. I, I can definitely tell you that most of the times the VP IT gets a better salary than the factory manager who actually brings in value to the organization. We, there are a lot of jargons talked about IT enablement, business strategy, everything. But what happened like these strategies were actually driven by the ERP vendors rather than the organization which is wanting it to run. So the big names actually literally took the organizations for a ride. And most importantly is like these guys were not able to come out of this whole thing because having invested few million dollars on it, you have no other option other than to continue with it. It's like, uh, more jokingly to tell, it's like if you have married a person whom you, are, you don't like because you cannot anyway divorce, so you have to continue with it, you start adjusting to that person. So this is what has been happening in the business. And things started changing in 2005 where from 
applications point applications where people started looking at outsourcing or uh, subscribing to CRM applications which were very simple point solutions not complicated people started looking at why can't I even look at my primary business on the cloud people started experimenting it we we were where uh, I don't know whether we are lucky or unfortunate, we did all the initial work in the country to educate people on how you can run your core business on the cloud, uh, which today is more common. So, software as service is a model. If you look at it, there are a lot of software as service vendors. But what is happening is the sustainability of a software as service model comes with classic multi tenancy. Because we have seen many software companies starting software as a service, but beyond a point of time, they were not able to scale because of the multi-tenancy. Multi-tenancy, primarily people think that multi-tenancy is equivalent to virtualization, equivalent to uh, partitioning and other things. But uh, we have seen from a business point of view that unless you have an architecture in place to provide a multi-tenancy, wherein you have only one version of the product and one instance of the product running, you could not make large scale because we already know that a lot of big names are finding it very difficult to, uh, to manage the customization that is going on with each of the installations that they have with the customers. So it's pretty important that a software as a service vendor has to be a pure multi-tenant and customers who subscribe to them need to have a full understanding of what they are buying it into because all set and done about EC entry and EC exit doesn't stop there because if you are running the business in two years in a particular software, it is not easy for you to migrate to another one because all the normal complexities of a migration of an on-premise solution is there in a cloud also. It could be very easy to say that yes, you can download the data and then you can start working with this. That is possible provided you have used the application for say two or three months and you still have not bettered your entire organization onto this product. But if you have been with the product for two, three years, you will have a problem of migration and you will have a problem of con business continuity in, with respect to the software. So it's important that software as services model is very clearly understood. Every cloud computing, it doesn't mean that just because you move your server onto a cloud and somebody is managing the application doesn't solve the problem in the long run. You would continue to have cost of uh, service, you will continue to have escalation of costs. These are things that will happen as the business grows. So the future as we see is that it's, it's going to be purely subscription based. This bit of subscription based from Ramco's perspective is a bit different that we are not talking about people leaving the organization or say leaving the ecosystem and coming back. We are talking about the amount of subscription or the intensity of subscription being uh, changed with respect to the businesses. Like say for instance, if you have a textile company, you are not doing well this year. If you have taken a 50 user license, you could actually scale it down to 10 and then move up back to 50 when the business grow up. We are not talking about exiting. We are talking about scaling down or scaling up of the operations uh, with, with respect to SaaS. And we see this as the, pro, as the value permit uh, Ramco does not play anything on the infrastructure as SaaS. We are not a soft, uh, hardware company. We are uh, not into that. However, we do offer platform as a service. We, our platform is being used by our partners and our customers to develop applications which could be deployed independently. And we have our own core ERP which is running on a SaaS. Today, uh, if you look at it, that we are the leader in terms of the ERP market in India. And this is possible only because this is a completely platform driven architecture and it's a SOA based uh, development. Entire application is developed over a complete SOA based architecture which helps complete seamless integration with any third party product. And more importantly what happens is like this deployment model can be chosen by the customer how the way he wants to deploy it on his cloud can be decided by the customer himself. So we see this as the big thing. I'm not going to repeat many of them because these have been repeated. So that's a problem if you come together with the same application and same solution. But what we have is like, what is the differentiator for Ramco? One of the very important thing is like, if you see most of the cloud players, providing a very complicated high-end software is always difficult because it is complicated to manage business class software. It's very easy to maintain point solutions which give you a simple view 
which does not have too much of integration. The, the complexity actually increases once you start addressing every business of an organization, right from say a quality department, your production, production planning, scheduling, uh, costing, your uh, inventory, everything put together if you start putting it, putting it in the cloud if you see it's going to be complicated. So if you see most of the players, they provide you something what they call it as a vanilla version, which is what you will use. But Ramco is a little bit ahead in terms of technology and the deployment. We do provide facilities for the customers to customize business processes, extend applications, as well as create new applications without having to change anything in your deployment. You could actually do it as though you are doing it in a Word or a PowerPoint. You can add things, you can modify. And these are again running on a pure multi-tenant platform. So what happens is like a customer gets a best of both worlds. He gets to see what he has as a standard application. He can build few things which is his own IP, intellectual property, which he can continue to use along with the core application. This is a very, very unique proposition because uh, not many people, for that matter, we haven't heard of people who could change the business processes on a pure multi-tenant platform. It means a different installation that happens with each of the customer, if at all you start going for a customization. And most importantly is like people, if you look at it from a real point of view that SaaS has gained uh, significance because investment in hardware, particularly from a, I, uh, um, I would say IS department thing has become a, a real overhead for organizations because every three, four years you have to change your servers, network, everything. So people are going in for complete SaaS based applications. Uh, these are some common terminologies. I don't think I should deal with them right at this point of time. And where does Ramco brings in the unique proposition is this one company which provides a complete, complete ERP including analytics and master data management and third party services and mobility, everything together. So you don't have to worry about having a application integrating with a third party analytics, paying for a ISV, the cost of integrating and having a mobile application which is separate for us accessibility doesn't matter from where you are coming from. You could be from an iPad, it could be from a Samsung tab or it could be from a desktop or it could be from a laptop. It doesn't matter, we are completely technology independent at the client end. You could use any of the devices right from your mobile phone, you could access the application. So what happens is like this is being done through our own platform which provides us to deliver the solution on various client end devices and these work seamlessly you don't have to specify that you're coming from an ipad or from this and all these applications can either work as a web based or on a native mode like say you could have a native ipad uh, I, ipad apps which could be apple apps which could be used for running the application and analytics as such is also embedded into the product which is a very very uh, important thing because the smbs cannot afford a high level analytics which otherwise they need they also need analysis in terms of where the money is being spent, how better I can use my cash flow. We are not just talking about an ERP, we are talking about a complete business intelligence along with the businesses. And uh, these are some things which possibly you have, you have already heard. And what is unique about Ramco is with our experience in India, we have customers using the same application, a 10 crore company operating out of a small industrial estate to a company which is 3000 crores having application running across different plants, different types of businesses. So what it really means is like the application, we call it as an elastic application. That is basically you could use slice of the application by using what you subscribe for and also you can, elast you can elongate a particular business process to suit your business needs. And for this, we are not talking about as a customization, we are talking about as a configuration. These are processes which can be either increased or decreased in scope or in complexity based on what you subscribe for. And this is very unique because organizations which go in for a BPR type of things, like say today's 20 crore companies are the ones who are going to become 2000 crores in the next three to four years. So what happens is like these organizations need to adopt a product which 
may not have to be changed when they go big. So you should be able to grow the uh, uh, businesses without having to change your business application. You should be able to adopt the new practices without having to change your businesses. So this particular option gives the users or the businesses to scale up their operations without having to go for a new product. And what happens is like people move from a very low end product to a next level product without even seeing that there is a migration that's happening. A simple example could be, I have a small op, uh, company which runs a uh, purchasing department where a purchase, only a purchaser is running. So the process for one, one guy based purchasing department could be very different than once I become a 2000 crore company where I have a big purchasing application where people do multiple varieties of purchases. So what happens is like when you go for bigger organization, you start subscribing for more complex services which is already available as part of the ecosystem. So what is very important is like you can scale up or scale down not just in terms of usage also in terms of the business scope that you are using. Like say for instance you could have three different businesses having three different requirements in terms of business usage and you could choose each one of them for each of business. You don't have to subscribe for the entire business process also. So where does the uniqueness come? We call it as the extension kit. And we provide this entire platform on the cloud. So you could develop your own business application, your own extensions, your own business process changes over the web on your own application and deploy it over the web. There is absolutely nothing that's required for a person who's doing these extensions except a knowledge of the business and also a knowledge of how to use our platform to do extensions. So. Uh, Pretty much you could do a software development, complete software development can be done through our platform. So it's a completely, um, one of the important thing is like being in the business for more than six years now, we are very clear that the technology is going to change, the skin of the application is going to change. Today it's HTML5 in iPad, we are having flex, we started with a typical HTM based application. So the skin can change continuously and we provide automatic upgrades for the skin that comes out of the application and we also encourage our customers and partners to create their own skin to access the application. So these are some things which I think we have talked about and most of other important thing is like because we are a complete platform based organization we also provide integration services over the web. So any good software company can actually use our integration services to pretty much integrate with any product in the world as long as they are web services enabled. And this can be achieved to our platform, uh, integration platform. And what it brings in as value proposition is pretty much the same as any software as services model. I don't think I should deal with this much. And, and uh, what we see, I think I'll just skip few things. Uh, these are few things that I think the speaker before me actually talked about. And we see this as the biggest change that's going to happen in the next 10 years is people would like to have applications hosted on the cloud and take it into your premise for few few months or few years then take it back to cloud. There, are, there is going to be a complete interoperability between cloud to on-premise to cloud to on-premise and organizations which could, which has a complete multi-tenant architecture will be able to handle this seamlessly from a customer wanting to take it from his premises to uh, cloud. So the possibilities are pretty endless. And Ramco actually provides a solution for large enterprises to manage their subsidiaries or suppliers as an exchange uh, application. We provide ecosystems to large companies which want to manage all the all their subsidiary business while the main business could be running on an on-premise. And these are few case studies which we have, um, large multinationals adopting our products. And I think I'll just stop with what Professor Prahalad talked about Ramco systems in his 
famous book of age of innovation there are two software companies which found a special mention on the intellectual property category unisys and ramco systems where he said this this one company in india which has built a platform which developed software rather than developing software itself and we are very thankful to late mr prahlad that's about it any questions Uh, uh, if you know that SAS 70 as a as a certification is outdated, it's no more valid today. There's a new certification called ISAE 3400, which has replaced SAS 70 since last year. So Ramco is the first organization in Asia to have got the certification done by KPMG. That's from a certification point of view. The other process is in terms of like we have built in audit controls, we have built in um, application security in terms of how many layers of security a user wants to access. I could pretty much uh, say for instance if you are the CEO of the company and you do not want anybody to access your application other than you from your iPad alone, we could actually fix the access from your physical device. If you want a high level security or you want the application to be accessed only from your office premises, you don't want people to access it from their home, we could actually fix that. that Actually, not that you can actually fix it, not, not necessarily Ramco. So, uh, the physical access security can be controlled. More importantly, I think uh, the security aspect is more pronounced here because of the ERP part. And we provide separate instance of database to each of the customer. We are the only company in the world to provide that, where each customer gets a separate instance of database, which means Everybody's data is not mixed and a programmer's mistake will never show data of other company. That's the first thing. And once we are putting it into a separate database, there are a lot of other checks that you can do in terms of who can access the database, what are the controls that you want to have it on a database instance. So this is the, this is the uh, application layer security. And of course, you can choose the layer of security you want when you subscribe to us, like whether you want a role-based security, role-based, location-based, location-based, user-based, role-based, so many options are available. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I have a question. Yeah. So I like the part where you said uh, not only the volume of usage, but also as the organization grows, the business process can be tailored. Absolutely. Right? There is this aspect of provisioning the service itself, right? Right. Modeling the workflow and all. Absolutely. How do you do that? I mean, how how, uh, yeah. how do you ramp up and ramp down the... Yeah, things? see, one of the things is like, uh, for a moment, let's not worry about the server side. Mm -hmm. Because any SaaS provider has to provide a 30 or 40 percent buffer, which we may or may not use. Right. Because you can never predict what is the number of transactions a person is doing. And we are not billing customers based on transactions. You could pretty well get two users and do transactions day in and day out. From a process point of view, what happens is like the whole application is being defined in services. And the underlying tables will have the information to be accessed from different services you want. I'll tell you a basic example. Like say for instance, you're working with a purchase department. When you are a small company, you did a direct purchase order. Just somebody keys in a purchase order and then finish it off. As you move up the value chain, you might get into contracts with people for purchase. So what happens like now a contract management comes as part of the purchasing solution, right. which you didn't have before. So what happens is like you have to migrate your business from this particular pattern of business process to this. Migrate means no data migration. You have to go to a configuration saying that from now on my business process includes contract management plus purchase order. Whatever data you entered previously will be available in your purchase module and you could access it. So similarly, we provide all these layers of application. Every business process will have layers of complexity. You could skip some of them, you could use all of them and this particular process will be done by our partner community who will say, okay, now you are migrating, now you are graduating from this process A to process B. When you migrate to process A to process B, a traditional process, a traditional way of doing it is like we do a data migration. Here the application is architected that whatever data I have will work for all layers of processes. Okay. It is designed in such a way that it can work with any layers of process. Cool. Thank you.
Thank you so much, Mr. Raman. Thank you. And now, on behalf of UBM, I'd like to thank Mr. Raman with a moment.